Well, a friend of mine recently brought me this uh, HR2510 10 meter radio to see if I could repair it for him. It was in storage for a while and when he removed it from storage it wouldn't transmit. So it's here on the bench. I'm actually making this video after the repair is done and I thought I'd walk through the process I went through in doing the repair and maybe that will help you in your troubleshooting efforts. So in initially checking it out and hooking it up on the bench uh, the symptom that I saw is that uh, when you keyed the mic to transmit like this you'd get the indicator on the display that uh, the unit was going into transmit and that was regardless of the mode you know, AM, FM or single sideband I'd get that indicator but there was no RF output and there was no no noticeable change or increase in the uh, current drawn by the unit so this told me a couple of things that you know the microphone PTT is working you know the microprocessor understands the radio is going into transmit and is you know putting the transmit indicator on the display uh, it's just that uh, something is amiss in uh, either in the finals or in the uh, the transmit path. So taking a look at the uh, the block diagram, we can see that the uh, the PTT line comes into one half of IC 104, which is actually a dual op amp. The other half is used as the mic preamp, and that controls a transistor here, which switches two more transistors to essentially turn on the 8 volt supply to receive circuits or to transmit circuits. So I, I decided to start looking in this area, uh, mainly because there was really almost an imperceptible change in uh, supply current when we switch from transmit to receive, which would indicate that uh, maybe we're never even switching out of receive at all. So I decided to start looking in this area. So looking at the schematic, uh, those uh, three transistors that kind of control the uh, transmit and receive power are these transistors right here. Uh, this is uh, Q136 and then Q127 and uh, Q125. So this guy kind of controls both of these and these control the transmit and receive power. So I took a look uh, on the board and started probing around uh, in this area. Taking a look at the circuit board layout, you find those three transistors uh, right in this area right here. Uh, there's Q136, 127, and 125. So if we look down in the unit itself, uh, those devices are right here. So there's uh, Q136, that's the one we're primarily interested in, and then these other two. So I was able to probe down uh, at, the, at this transistor and found that you know, the uh, emitter was indeed uh, at ground. Uh, the collector had uh, a bias voltage on it, so that's good, but the base was always turned off, whether we were transmitting or receiving. So this was not getting switched on or off. So if this was not getting switched on or off, you know, the transmit circuit was never getting enabled. So we need to f look further to see what was driving that transistor. So going back to the schematic, uh, the base of this transistor is what was, what was not getting switched on or off during transmit. So if we follow that up, it actually comes from this guy, which is uh, IC104, it's a dual op amp. Uh, this output from pin 8, uh, it's actually, you uh, might think, well, why is it pin 8 on a dual op amp? This is actually in a single inline package, it's actually a 9 pin package. So pin 8 happens to be the output of one of the two op amps. And it's just driving through essentially a Zener diode down to that uh, uh, transistor. So I started looking around at what was going on with. Uh, you know, this op amp to see you know why that's not working right. According to the layout, uh, that op amp is actually down here. You can see IC104. That's the dual op amp in a single inline package. And there's that Zener diode D147. So uh, let's take a look at where that's located inside the unit. And that's uh, kind of right down in here. Let's see if I can if I can get focused in there or not. <laughs> let's see if I can get point down and kind of see where I'm pointing right down here that guy right there is that op amp. It's uh, kind of underneath the wiring harness here. A little tricky to kind of see with the camera. Uh, but that's where we had to go start poking around. So in poking around uh, the op amp here, none of the voltages seemed right. So the first thing you do is start checking the supply rails. Power supply for this op amp is actually coming in through pin 1. And if you trace it around, it's trying to figure out the source of power, and it's not this direction here. There's a 10K resistor there, so it's not getting power that way. If you follow, if you follow that line through, it's actually drawing power through this 100 ohm resistor, and that's going off to a power bus. 
So I measured the voltage at this end of the 100 ohm resistor, and I'll show you where that is on the board. So that resistor is uh, R40, and uh, where he's located on the board is, uh, is right here. He's sitting right between these two capacitors. That's the R40 sitting right down there. So I measured the proper uh, supply bus voltage on the supply bus side of that resistor, so that's good. But I measured the voltage on the other side of that resistor, and uh, that was actually sitting down near ground, about 80 millivolts. So that uh, told me that uh, either the resistor itself has gone either open or to some larger value, larger than 100 ohms. So I made a quick resistance measurement across the resistor, and it measured about 100 ohms. Now, if it measured much larger than that, that would tell me the resistor certainly was bad. But the fact that it reads 100 ohms means that either the resistor is good or there's some other path around it. So I also made a resistance measurement from the op-amp side of that resistor to ground. And that measured just a few ohms, and that was suspicious because if we look, take a look at the circuit, there really shouldn't be anything that would uh, you know, just be a couple of ohms to ground. So that tells me that something is likely shorted or bad on the op-amp side of that resistor. So let's go take a look at the schematic and uh, see what, uh, what's there and what we might suspect. And so if we look at the schematic uh, on, the other, on this side of the resistor where we're concerned about, so we've got a 5.6K resistor going to this transistor here, probably not a big deal. I got another 1K resistor kind of coming off this way, going down to another circuit. Uh, I've got two 220 microfarad 10 volt capacitors, electrolytic capacitors sitting here. Then I've got a 47K and 27K resistor going up to the op amp, uh, and then power for the op amp itself. So just from you know experience, we know that electrolytic capacitors um, tend to get a little flaky when they get some age on them, like this uh, radio has. And of course, the op amp itself could be bad. So you know, my first thought is either the op amp or the two caps are what are I'd suspect are bad. So since the caps are easier to remove and check, I decided to start there. So let's take a look at where they're located uh, on the board and inside the device. Okay, so those two capacitors are located uh, right here, C75, and uh, the other capacitor are right down here next to that op-amp. So let's take a look at them, uh, where they are, and talk about what we did here uh, inside the device. So, so this is uh, one of the capacitors uh, right there next to the resistor we were just talking about, and the other capacitor right down there, you can just see the top of it uh, just underneath the wiring harness there. So I first pulled this cap, it was easier to get to. And uh, it wasn't shorted, but its value was uh, about a third of what uh, its rated value was. So while it wasn't the problem, I figured as long as I had it out, I replaced it with a new one. So there's a, a new 220 microfarad cap there. So we turned our attention down to this capacitor down here. And uh, that one turned out to be shorted. So that actually was the problem. It was uh, that guy right down there. I'll try to get the camera to focus on that a little bit better but that 220 microfarad capacitor was shorted. So we replaced that with a new one as well, and that actually solved the problem. Uh, the radio transmitted after that. So uh, you know, luckily, uh, we didn't have to uh, go mess around with trying to yank out that uh, nine pin uh, single inline dual op amp package, because that would have been a little bit of a mess. So the problem turned out to be quite simple with a simple uh, a shorted electrolytic cap. Alright, so we'll start off putting the radio in uh, AM mode. Uh, it should do about uh, 10 watts or so in AM. I've got the, uh, the watt meter in here. And just keying the microphone up, uh, we're on the 100 watt scale. Uh, so uh, we can see we're running just, on, just over uh, you know, 10 watts, probably about uh, 11 to 12 watts of uh, RF power. So uh, we know that we're transmitting fine in AM. We'll switch ourselves to FM. And we should get about the same uh, carrier power in FM, so that's working well as, as well. So we'll take a look uh, on the scope here uh, to see how well it's working on single sideband because uh, my meter is not a peak reading meter. So we'll start off on AM, and if we go up and take a look at the scope, when I key up, I can see the carrier and I can see uh, the modulation as I speak into the microphone here. So that's uh, that carrier level that we're looking at there when I don't speak. And that's representing uh, about uh, 10 watts, 10 to 12 watts of RF carrier power. Okay, so we'll switch the rig into upper sideband mode here. And uh, now as I speak, we can actually see uh, the power meter moving along with my voice. 
Uh, it's not a peak reading meter, but I can see some power indication uh, along with my voice. And now, of course, looking at the scope, it's very easy to see uh, that uh, I'm getting uh, some good modulation here uh, with uh, for single sideband. And uh, the peak envelope power is running probably 20 to 25 watts, uh, just based on uh, how much larger that peak amplitude is compared to uh, what we saw in the AM mode. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, little repair review video. Even though we didn't uh, get to show you actually doing the repair, it really pretty accurately walked through the process that I went through in debugging uh, the problem, troubleshooting it, and then uh, ultimately repairing this radio. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Comments are always welcome.